Good day folks, I'd like to show you today how to charge a capacitor with uh, basically magnets. Now essentially what happens, a lot of people have tried this before and even Bedini and Tom Beard and Hintz are putting two magnets between the capacitor for basically a vacuum type energy tapper. Now a lot of people have tried this and obviously it doesn't work. You see, so now I've got the capacitor in between and it's connected to both sides of the meter and we're reading zero. So there's something that needs to be done here is if you are able to feed RF essentially, but not directly coupled. So I got the high voltage oscillator here right next to, I made a iron coil around the magnet here. And one side of it touches the other magnet core. And I've got the capacitor in the middle here. Now what happens for AC and RF fields to be able to, um, Essentially what I'm getting at, I was talking about the dielectric resonance. Well, for this to happen, it has to be a very nonlinear interaction. So the field, that's why the magnet is not completely centered. The field has to be um, non-symmetrical. So basically stronger in one point than another. And certain capacitors, like the regular ones, they have a kind of shielding. So the fields don't, external fields don't really get to them. But certain types, they do. So I just basically learned this with trial and error. So here's the modulator and I'm going to show you. Now what's very interesting is in this specific configuration, it's magnetics that are acting as your rectifier, you see? And the capacitor will accumulate and it's an open loop system, obviously. So this could run with milliamps and just think how many capacitors could charge and dump using this method. But it, it was all placement, folks. It, it just, this is the only way it was able to work. So I will turn it on, and this is just a proof of concept, okay? But the point is the capacitor gets a real DC voltage. So now I'm going to turn it on right here. So see what's happening here? Minus 18, minus, it's a slow thing, but it's because it, it, it's slightly uh, doing a memory effect on the field of the capacitor, uh, the dielectric. Now the meter is basically uh, loading it down here. But that was my point. So it's very sensitive. I could tune it a little bit. Hold on, we'll try and get the best spot here. There it goes. So you see the minus polarity here indicating a, an alignment at the dielectric that's somewhat permanent or well, temporary because if it be real, you know, AC capacitors can normally just displace, not, but when this effect, hold on, I gotta get it just right. Let's see, there it is, there. So this is just very crude. I'm sure there can be fine tuning here. But the interesting part is the capacitor stores a DC with fields and magnets. It's basically a crude way of getting a rectifier. So I'm going to turn this off now. So again, more food for thought, because someone brought this up and uh, I said it before, you know, you need to do something more to it to make this work. So just crudely speaking, you know, the gap makes a difference. The asymmetrical of the magnetic fields make a big difference. You have to hit a non-symmetrical area. And uh, each side of the capacitor has to have one side of the field basically stronger than the other so that's where there's a partial alignment which gives you a polarity difference which basically charges up the capacitor but it's all an interaction of rf and magnetics and dielectrics but again a lot of people don't go into the details they don't tell you everything else you know it's pretty easy to set off a high frequency generator in the next room and this stuff will couple into it and it just looks like the capacitor, you know, is doing its thing when, no, but the point is we can feed it with a one wire system. It doesn't even have to be direct coupling as you can see. And I wasn't spark gapping this, you can see it. When I turn it on, I'll show you again, I'll turn it on. 
and uh, you don't see there's no spark gap here actually when I spark gap it it actually kills the effect hold on I'll show you say it goes to zero it wants to anyways it, it's highly unstable so you gotta decouple it slightly and there it goes 13 and I had it in there it's very picky it reminds me of some other magnetic projects where you know that they had sliders and everything and one millimeter made a big difference so yeah very very touchy but this is crude but I just wanted to show you the core concept someone could really take this seriously and do something interesting with it and again thank you for watching and always looking forward to your comments